We didn't expect there would be a war. We didn't know anything. I came out of my house and saw planes coming. I threw me down on the ground not to get hit. My wife was out on the yard and was closer to the bomb. We ran away, the plane continued to circle above the village. There was a truck in the village where everyone gathered. We took off with nothing but the clothes we wore. When we had left, the South Ossetians came and took all our belongings. Then they burned down the houses. One man who didn't manage to flee was shot dead. A year has passed since the war between Russia and Georgia ended. The city of Gori has recovered from this in August 2008. The media reports from the tiny but strategically important country in Caucasus are now fewer. But the situation is perhaps worse than ever. Political crisis, lousy economy and a wave of internally displaced refugees to take care of. When we took off with the truck, the road was bombed near the football field. It was getting dark and the driver didn't see the hole in the road. The truck overturned and we almost got under it, but we made it. When we got away, the village was full of Russian tanks. We were all unarmed, but they bombed us anyway. About 130,000 ethnic Georgians have been forced to leave the outbreaking regions South Ossetia and Abkhazia. The strategically important area of Kodori in Abkhazia has been totally emptied of ethnic Georgians. The number of people who have been able to return to their homes in South Ossetia is still unclear, but there are still Georgians leaving their houses and moving south to the Georgian safer south of the border. And this is where many of them end up, in huge permanent refugee camps. This one contains 2,000 identical small houses built in the middle of nowhere in the Georgian countryside. They have no infrastructure there. What can they do in order to see this picture? I have been there, you see. This is terrible. This is like reservation, you see. But maybe uh, nowadays it's better than nothing. But I would uh, like to solve this problem more successfully. Professor Tamar Knadze concludes the country's biggest problems and the dissatisfaction with the president. Few people support him, you see, and his rate is very low because we face political crisis. Because our uh, social, political, economical situation nowadays in Georgia is very poor, you see. And we have uh, these lost territories, so many refugees, very high rate of poverty, you see. They are starving elementary, and conditions are terrible, you see. We need normal government in order to organize normal life for our citizens, you see. And uh, if they can't do this, if they are not able, you see, to create such kind of conditions, they must go away, they must resign. People are unhappy. During this summer, they demonstrated for two whole months outside the parliament. A major part of the capital's main street, Rostavelli, was closed and the demonstrators refused to leave until the president stepped down, which he hasn't. There's no freedom of speech, there's no freedom of media, there's no freedom of um, court, freedom of legislative body, and um, it's, uh, it's, uh, all about, it's all against uh, the democratic institutes.
We still have no idea why this war happened, but uh, we know that uh, lots of people are killed. There were massive demonstrations last year as well. President Saakashvili's solved that issue by clearing the streets with force. This time, the president needed a more diplomatic solution, as a large number of nations condemned his previous actions. Till Saakashvili uh, resigns, we're going to stay here absolutely peacefully. However, clashes were inevitable. Demonstrators demanded the release of three members of the opposition held in custody. One of the opposition leaders made efforts to calm down a situation that resulted in the injury of 20 demonstrators, three policemen and a journalist. The opposition in Georgia wants to put an end to President Saakashvili's undemocratic ruling. The problem, however, is that the opposition has internal conflicts. Peter Semnaby is an EU diplomat in Southern Caucasus. He's given the difficult task of mediating between the Georgian government and the opposition. At a meeting at the Marriott Hotel in Tbilisi, the opposition parties are trying to unify. Nino Burjanadze is the former speaker of the parliament. She's now one of the main opposition leaders. The problem is that, unfortunately, our government is not implementing obligations uh, which will make this country really democrat and uh, free and fair. Nino Burjanadze was one of the key figures in the peaceful revolution in 2003, also called the Rose Revolution. Uh, from the very beginning, during two or three years after the revolution, of course, we made lots of uh, progress in the country. And the pillar of positive things were, was much heavier than pillar of uh, negative things or mistakes. But unfortunately, uh, we made wrong uh, steps uh, in uh, direction of media freedom or in direction of uh, independence of judiciary. and. Uh, it uh, just uh, came to the very dramatic point and people began to protest against the um, just methods of ruling because uh, this country war became more and more dependent not from the system or from the institution but uh, many things was dependent from the personalities which is unacceptable for democracy. Turning point of course was August 2008 when Saakashvili involved the country in the war and we lost 20% of Georgian territory. We received Russian military bases back. Uh, we received lots of uh, other problems. Uh, it uh, postponed Georgia's uh, possibility to be a member of NATO and closer cooperation with European Union. So many things and in many directions country will uh, have been damaged. My request for an interview with the president has been ignored. I still haven't heard anything from his office. The relation between Georgia and Russia is deep frozen. In May 2009, President Saakashvili claimed that there was an attempted coup at a military base outside Tbilisi. He also claimed that the coup was funded by the Russians. The government responded immediately by sending tanks to base. However, there were no signs of a coup at the base. In the midst of this tense situation, NATO carried out a military exercise in Georgia. Russia calls the move an open provocation and responds with a massive military exercise and strengthens its military presence in the de facto occupied Georgian regions of the South Ossetia and Abkhazia. A new deal was made between the parties involved. The deal puts Russia in charge of guarding the borders between the outbreaking regions and Georgia. And that is bad news for tens of thousands of ethnic Georgians whose houses are now on the Russian-controlled side of the border. This is the European Monitoring Group in Georgia, EUMM. Their mission is to observe and report to the European Union. We are now in Meshketa, field office. We have to follow the highway and then we have to leave the highway up to the ABL to Otsisi. It should also be mentioned that the European Union has had peacekeeping forces in the region before. The forces, however, had to leave this year as Russia stopped an extension of the mandate.
just nu befinner vi oss i ett Now we're at the border in Otsisi, right in the middle of the Russian and the Georgian positions. On this side we have Georgian police officers, on the other side they are Russian soldiers and South Ossetian border guards. Can you show us the territory that the Russians now control? 500 meters that way there's a Russian outpost. Then the border follows the riverbank up that way where the Russian base camp is located. So this territory was not under Russian control before the war. That is correct. This was Georgian territory. Nicholas Corelli and his wife live right between Georgian and the Russian forces. The village contains of six households. When the dog barks at night, we're scared that someone is coming to attack us. The Russians are over there with their arms and the Georgians are over there with their arms. If there would be a gunfire, we would be right in the middle. The other day the Russians came to us. My wife asked them to hide from the Georgian soldiers. Why are you scared? the Russians asked. Well, at least we're not scared, we can open fire if we want, they said. But we told them that violence won't solve anything. They're very aggressive against our soldiers. That's how we live here. The Corellis have been offered a house in one of the permanent refugee camps, but they choose to stay despite the uncertainty. But Georgi Djocishvili has no alternative to the refugee camp. His farm in South Ossetia has become a base for Russian forces. Georgi mourns his farm. It was a beautiful farm. The Russians made it their headquarters. There was wine, vodka and six big sacks of flour. I had 80 chickens, so big that two men wouldn't manage to eat one chicken. I had 40 baby turkeys and one male turkey. The male was so big that 20 men wouldn't manage to eat it. Everything was left there. Of course, the South Ossetians and the Russians were happy. We fled and got nothing. They threw us out.